Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This is my annual video that I do on bag soil products. I'm going to go over what's in them, save you some money, because the most expensive way to fill your raised beds is to use the products that are over here to my right. On the second part of the video, I'm going to show you how to make a basic container mix. You can use it in your containers, you can use it in your raised beds. It's at least 50% cheaper than going and buying it in bags. And all you're going to use is peat moss and topsoil. You can save more money instead of buying the bag topsoil. You can just go out to your yard. You can collect earth from there. 50% peat moss, just FYI. 50% earth, it makes a great base. I'll talk more about that towards the end of the video. All these products are just an increase in peat moss. So I recommend buying a bale of peat moss. This is three cubic feet compressed. When you open it up, fluff it up, add in some water, it's going to be about six cubic feet worth of materials. This costs $22. I'll put the prices up on the screen in a video description. But this turns out to be about $3.50, 75 cents a cubic foot. As you work your way down, you got a cubic foot of material here. That's going to be about three bucks for just plain old earth basically thrown in there. As you come over to garden soil, it's taking any bag product, earth, the company might use, they add in some more peat moss, you end up with all-purpose garden soil. That's a cubic foot. That's going to cost you four to five dollars for a cubic foot. Now this is where it starts getting confusing. Garden soil is really topsoil, peat moss mixed together. The stuff that you can do yourself by just buying that big bale of peat moss right over there, just mix it into your earth. And it's great for using it in ground, as it says. When you come over to the next part, this is where the industry really uses advertising to get your money. This is called raised bed garden soil. There's no such thing as raised bed mix. You don't need to buy that. And then you come over to here, you have raised bed potting mix. And at the end over here, the most expensive way to buy your stuff is the potting mix. That's like nine or $10 for a cubic foot right there. Raised bed mix is just a way for people, company, companies to get your money. You know, they know that people are looking to fill the raised bed, so they slap raised bed on there and people buy it. And that's okay, these are conveniences. But at uh, 1.5 cubic feet, I think you're getting to about $8 right there. Two cubic feet, you're getting a little closer to maybe 10 bucks. A lot of the mixes that are for raised beds have a lot of wood in there, they have peat moss in there. It's not really super quality stuff it works there's nothing wrong with any of these products you're just paying a lot of money to buy them in a bag so years and years ago it was just you know peat moss topsoil garden soil for in-ground use and then you had your potting mix and then in between all the stuff came up buy what's on sale buy what you're comfortable with but this is the most expensive way to go about it lots of wood product in Kellogg more peat moss here in the miracle Grow type. Let's take a look at what's in the, actually in the bags. Now the other thing to keep in mind is that bagged products, soil, compost, they're not really regulated. You can find just about anything in there. If you read the ingredients, you'll see um, natural wood products. That could be pallets. I'd like to point this out because this is a marketing scam right here. When you go to any miracle Grow product, it'll say, grow plants twice as big. You'll see a little asterisk there. When you come down here, what does that mean? It's this product with fertilizer in it. You can put in any fertilizer into the mixes you make compared to unfed or unfertilized plants. So what they're basically saying is this product with fertilizer will grow plants twice as big, but we compare it to products that don't have any fertilizer in it which is really misleading. I don't know why they do that. I don't know why they're allowed to do that. You'll also see things like organic nutrients, all natural, locally made, and that's probably all true. Doesn't mean this is 100% organic. The problem is that the bag products aren't really regulated. They don't test them. They don't test for chemicals or heavy metals or anything crazy like that. Who knows what's get, <laughs> what really goes into the bags. So don't be fooled by you know, just looking for bags that say organic. They're really, really, trust me, not regulated. Here's another miracle Grow product. Grows more vegetables guaranteed. Asterisk, come down here, and it says versus 
the unfed plants. So let's start at the beginning. Now peat moss is actually certified organic because it's a single product. It is just peat moss from Canadian bogs. And taking a look at it, nice and light. You're gonna see this showing up in the other products. It's beautiful stuff. You can use it to make your own container mixes, garden mixes, whatever you want. When we come down to the topsoil, it's got moisture in it, first of all. Squeeze it, clumps together, probably has some clay, pieces of wood. Doesn't look much different than the garden soil. Garden soil, when you squeeze it, still clumps, but not as much. There's a little bit of peat moss in there. Things are a little more finely shredded. And again, all these products work. They're just really expensive. Coming over to the garden soil raised bed mix, you squeeze it, clumps together. Doesn't look really much different than that. And I like to do this test. Put it into water and you see what floats. So that's probably more earth, more peat moss, and you can see some pieces of floating wood chips. Coming over to here, this is the one that's the raised bed potting mix. It's got some vermiculite in, or it's got some perlite in there, more wood chips, some peat moss, and then when you put this into the water, let's sink it a little bit, you'll see a lot more pieces floating. Some of that's peat moss, some of that is shredded wood, and again, expensive, it works. Then you come over to the potting mix, they get rid of more of the woody material. It's more refined, and it's really, it's really just peat moss, perlite, maybe some earth in there. They do throw in fertilizer. Don't buy, you don't need to buy any bags that have fertilizer in it because you're gonna add it in yourself anyway. And again, this is getting to, for a cubic foot, about nine or $10 a bag. So it gets to be really expensive because the peat moss you can buy, and that's about $3.75 a cubic foot. The perlite, you know, does help a little bit with drainage. It's not a must. You can buy a bag of perlite really cheaply in the big box stores too, and you can throw it into your mix that you're gonna make, and it's gonna look exactly like this. Now, as we walk back, we're going from most expensive to the cheapest. And again, what I wanna stress, it's just the addition of peat moss to all these products that gives them a name change and increases the cost. When you come over here, you can really take peat moss, earth from a bag, from your garden, and then let's consider this. This is leaf grow. This is a leaf product, a composted product. Could be manure. You really just need these three products to create anything out to the right, but you can make container mix, potting mix, <laughs> earth bed mix, raised bed mix, whatever you want to call it, you can make. And it's just taking 50% peat moss to 50% of the earth and you mix it up in a wheelbarrow. And with time, we'll do this real quick, you get a nice base. Once the base is made, I might add in, you know, two thirds of this 50-50 mix, one third of the leaf grow, or two thirds of this 50-50 mix, one third compost. You can really make any, you know, combination of the mixture. This is just cheaper, it works, and you're gonna save a lot of money. All right, let's make some of the uh, mixes I like to make on a bigger scale. Please subscribe, follow me. I'll be doing an extensive video on really getting to details on making all these mixes, but I wanted to give you just the overview now so that you can go ahead and save yourself some money. Over the years, I've had different soil recipes. This is the base. I like to take 50% peat moss and then 50% earth. This is the topsoil right there, and it has a lot of wood chips in there. You can buy shredded hardwood if you wanna, you know, really copy this and, and make something that looks like this. Don't highly recommend that, but you could do that. This is from my earth. This is just from the ground we're standing on right now. A lot of clay. Clay has great micronutrients and minerals in there. Half peat moss, half your earth. It's the cheapest way to fill your beds. Now, this is pretty good for containers, not perfect, but with the 50-50 mix, I make a big batch of this 
and then I change it over for containers and then for my earth bed. So all we're going to do is really take this and mix it through and you're going to see how this looks. I'm going to mix this in too. Buying the bag topsoil real quick, you never know what you get in a bag topsoil product. So I recommend buying one bag, you know, open it up, check it out. If you like it, go buy more. But if you can, your earth is the best stuff to use for the 50-50 mix. On a side note, I want to cut in real quick, do the float tests, <laughs> see if it floats. Uh, topsoil, it varies greatly, bag to bag, state to state, county to county. So I do recommend getting a bag, checking it out first. A lot of times, sometimes it's clay and sand and rocks. Sometimes it's all wood. So doing the float test will let you know how much wood's in there. I like to break it up a little bit so that there's no clumps. And then you just drop it into the water and you see what you have. Maybe we should call this the uh, float rinse test. But as you kind of, you know, wash it off, pull it out, you're going to see it's mostly wood particles. The other thing you can do is take some of this out let it dry on a sunny day. Of course, today it's raining. They usually serve this wet because it looks darker, it looks better. But once this dries out, you're going to see really nothing but pieces of wood in there. And you may or may not want that, but the rinse test, the float test, letting it dry really lets you know what is in these bagged products. And again, everything that you saw is a combination of some earth, wood, and peat moss. This is the 50-50 mix or 60-40, something close. This is what it looks like when you're done. I'll show you what the other stuff is in a second. That is really nice. Inexpensive. I made it using a little bit of the topsoil, that much of the peat moss, and then two shovelfuls of my clay soil right over there. It's really, really nice. Let me show you what it looks like compared to the other stuff. So down here, this is the garden soil raised bed stuff. Now this is a little bit more wet, but I think this looks much better. Coming over here, the raised bed potting mix, I think it looks better. Plus it has your earth in there, which is going to give it microbes, mycorrhizae, all that stuff. When you start seeing all these added bacillus, whatevers, and different microbes, just throw in a scoop of compost, a scoop of earth, you're going to get worm eggs in there, you're going to have everything. I think that that looks pretty good. And then coming over to the potting mix, it really doesn't look that much different to me. And that's just at 50-50. If I were going to be making the potting mix, I would add in more peat moss. Again, if you want to subscribe and follow me, I'll be doing a video that shows you more extensively how to make each of these products. Coming back around, just so that you remember, this is what my clay soil looked like. I recommend your earth because it just adds microbes and stuff in there. That's what the potting mix looked like. Let me just mix that through. If you want to grow vegetables two times larger and grow more of them like miracle Grow, add in one or two handfuls of any organic granular fertilizer. We'll mix that through. And then if you want it to look more like a potting mix, you know, you can buy your perlite, throw it into there. So if you were to mix in some perlite, it's going to look like this. And then if I showed this to you, you'd be like, oh, that came out of a bag. So much cheaper. Mix the fertilizer through. Let me just mix this real quick. This is pretty much ready to be used wherever you want. It would do okay as a container mix. I would, you know, go to my formula after this. So this is 50-50. If I was going to make this more of a potting mix, container mix, I would probably do two-thirds of this material and then a third of peat moss, throw in some organic granular fertilizer. It's a great potting mix. You could put in compost, two thirds this, a third compost. You can really mix it up however you want. This is great for filling raised beds as it is now. You know, using your earth from like when you edge maybe your flower beds, just throw that into a wheelbarrow, put in half peat moss, you can fill your raised beds with this. It's great stuff. The variations on the recipes for how you want to use this 50-50 is really up to you. I will do a whole video, like I've been saying three times now, on how to um, really make a container mix, raised bed mix, just different ways that I personally use it. But this is all you need is this 50-50 peat, 50-50 earth. You're going to save yourself a ton of money. You can pretty much duplicate all of these bags and you're going to be good to go. The most, one of the most expensive 
barriers to starting gardening is, is getting the earth to fill your beds and your containers. Again, this is just beautiful stuff. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and please subscribe. If I didn't say it three times already, I'll say it four times. I'll be going more in depth on how to create the perfect soils for different uses in your garden. Thanks for watching.